Welcome to A Christmas Carol, presented to you by Rocket Box Theatre. If you enjoy this piece, we kindly ask that you consider making a small donation to the We Make Events campaign, an international movement that is working hard to support freelancers in the live events and entertainment industries and help them recover from the repercussions of COVID-19. Any donation you are able to make will massively support individual workers, families and industry charities affected by the current restrictions on arts and entertainment and will help springboard the industry we love into a rapid post-COVID recovery. More information about how you can donate is in the description below. We also suggest that when listening to this piece you wear headphones so you can fully experience the binaural sound design. Listen to that. Can you hear that? Why do we never get snow? Why do we just get wet and wind? This is Abbot King. Abbot Martin. That's what we want. We're the next stop. Middle of nowhere this. Mind you, Abbot Martin isn't even the middle of nowhere. It's the edge of nowhere. It's the end of nowhere. All right now, everybody on. Get in quick before the door shut on you, Janet. For goodness sake, do hurry up. Pat, Tracy, Sheila, Hannah and Morris bringing up the rear. Carol singers. Well, this should be fun. And one, two, three, four. On the first day of Christmas, what you listen to me? A partridge in a pear tree. We'd just like to inform our passengers that there does seem to be something going on with the brakes on the rear carriage. But we've called the engineers and we expect to be on our way very shortly indeed. We'll keep you up to date when the problem has been resolved. Thank you for your patience. Tree! Good evening everyone. We are the Abbot Coombe Choir. Abbot Coombe, Abbot Coombe, Abbot Coombe, Abbot Coombe, Abbot Coombe Choir. Love that. May I just say, you're all looking lovely. Very sparkly, some of you. Any requests? We cannot afford the copyright. Uh, anything, anything else? Feed the world? Uh, uh, not sure about that one. Uh, anyone else got a carol request? I saw three ships. Great, yes, we can do that one. <laughs> Hannah, do not let me down on the solo. I need you now more than ever. We have them captive. Three, four. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day in the morning. Hannah is collecting for us tonight. She's coming round with the bucket now. I saw three ships come sailing on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I saw three ships come sailing on Christmas Day in the morning. Good evening once again and happy Christmas to all our passengers. Just to keep you updated that we're still waiting for the engineers to arrive. So if you can all just sit tight, we expect to be moving very shortly indeed. Thank you for your patience. This is perfect. What? I have them. I have them. Captive, trapped, enchanted on the edge of their seats. Hannah, don't you see? This is our chance. Oh, don't do it. I must. We may never have this opportunity again. Sing us, sing us, sing us. Gather round. Now listen. <sighs> I hope we're not stopped for long. Uncle Ed does not appreciate lateness. Who's Uncle Ed? Oh, yeah. I forgot you guys don't know him. In fact, do you even know why you're here? On this train, with me? Well, I suppose we've got some time now to tell you a bit about my Uncle Ed. Three, four. Ooh. 
My Uncle Ed. He's a nasty piece of work, really. I shouldn't say that. My mum loved him, apparently. They were really close when she was alive, my dad always said. But, I don't know. I've never known him to be nice to anyone. He lives by the sea now, in a big dark house, on the edge of a cliff. And he loves finding other people's treasure with his metal detector. And keeping it. He hates Christmas. But more than that, he hates visitors. Which is why I go and see him every Christmas. To annoy him. And to keep him company. I mean, he is my only family and I'm his only family. And you can't be alone at Christmas. Good evening and happy Christmas to our passengers travelling with us. Just to inform you all that we are still waiting on our engineers, who do assure us that they are on their way. And once they do arrive, we will be moving really very, very shortly. Thank you for your patience. Ah, oh, sod this. I'm going to walk. for miles just as he likes it. He shouldn't live like this. He's got enough money. More than you or I. He could afford Buckingham Palace if he wanted. Who is it? Rosie, your niece, Rosie. Rosie? Rosie who? How many nieces called Rosie do you have? Well, I don't know. Well, it's me, Uncle. And I've brought a friend. Say hi. <laughs> Speak up. He's a bit deaf. <clears throat> Oh, can you let us in, Uncle? It's freezing out here. <sighs> Mind your head. Whoa. Careful, careful. Watch my stuff. Turn those off. Turn those off. Off, off, off. Hi, Uncle. It's dark. Well... You've got a torch, haven't you? Yes. So you don't need all these lights lit off, off, off. Unless you're paying the gas bill, that is. God, it's like Blackpool Illuminations. Oh, it's freezing in here. Where's your wood? No wood. Coal, then? Coal? Coal? I don't keep any coal in this house. I never have. Never will. It's a waste. A waste. Now, come over here. Sit there, I've piled the items here, and the books are over there. All alphabetical, all alphabetical. They're all labelled, you're literally just writing it in my books. I've done all the hard work for you, alright, you've got an easy job now, really. Uncle, my coat's not off yet. Let me take my boots off at least. I thought you were cold. Uncle, how will we see to work? Alright, one lamp. Start here, with this. Hey, look at this. What do you reckon? Diamond, that is. Real diamond. 
silly woman. Whoever lost it, bet she's kicking herself what it must be worth. Finders keepers, losers weepers, eh? Yeah, losers weepers. How have you been, Uncle? <coughs> Blown a gale out there, isn't it? <coughs> it's like for Christmas time, Uncle. I love Christmas time. I feel like people really try to be nice to each other. If I could have it my way, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Uncle! Niece, keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it. Let me leave it alone, then. Much good may it do you. Much good it has never done you. There are many things from which I might have derived good by which I've not profited. I dare say Christmas among the rest. But I'm sure I've always thought of Christmas time as a good time. A kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. The only time I know of in the long calendar of the year when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut-up hearts freely. And therefore, Uncle, though it's never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe it has done me good. And will do me good. And I say, God bless it. Ooh! Someone's been reading the classics. Oh, be quiet. Where am I sleeping tonight? You can have McGloin's old study if you want. Oh, cosy. What's this? Leave that! Leave it! You get on with your own work and don't touch anything. Anything at all. All right, all right. Keep your wig on. It's not a wig. So Rosie and her Uncle Ed worked until the gas ran out that Christmas Eve. Uncle Ed was too mean and stingy to light the lamps again, so he made Rosie generate electricity using nothing but a nutcracker. But as they worked, Rosie couldn't stop thinking about what she'd seen buried amongst her uncle's books. That was a map. I'm sure. It was a map. She was sure. It had been a map of the beach with not one, not two, but three large X's written red and large on the shoreline. That's it. I'm going to bed, Uncle. Uh, no, you are not. We're not done with these. It's Christmas Eve. Not in this house, it's not. What did I say? No coal, lamps, wood, gas, warmth, Christmas. No, no, no. Sit down. Get on with your nutcracker. I won't. Then you can go to your room. Good. No, I know. I mean, stay here. Do work. Good night, Uncle. Up, up, up she went with nothing but a light bulb and a nutcracker to show her the way. The house was empty and bare, but for the treasures piled up, found by cold, mean old Uncle Ed. There were toy soldiers, coat buttons, sewing kit, a tobacco box, a lady's pocket mirror, a fountain pen, a wedding ring, nuts and bolts and rusted engine parts from boats and tanks and planes and cars, a golden locket, still with a note inside, traced in a schoolboy's spiderweb writing. This read, Much love ever, your James. 2nd of November, 1918. All these treasures Rosie passed by as she wound her way to the study of Ed's business partner, Daniel McGloin. Clocks and watches ticking, and just as she was tipping over the edge of being awake, they told midnight. Of course, if Rosie's eyes had been open, she might have seen pale Daniel McGloin sitting in his study chair, reading from his accounts books. Get up, stretch, walk to the door, and pass straight through it. Down, 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 Daniel McGloin descended into the dark rooms below. Take it, take, take it all, take it all. It's all legal, you know. This map is public property. Anyone could have taken it out of the library, anyone. Look, I I'll show you where the treasure is myself. I was going to hand it over anyway. I, I swear, I swear. Just don't take it away, officer, please. No, it is no police bobby you see before you. Oh, with the Edward screw. No, it is I, Daniel McGloin, your business partner from years past. Daniel McGloin? But, 
But you're long dead. Yeah, I know. Then why are you here now? Before me as you were in life. <clears throat> Allow me to explain. Now, I'm sure even you'll know this one, Eddie. Happy and rich I was in life. I made my money quickly. Selling dodgy medicines to people oh so sick. Then one day I realised I would not live much longer Daniel, you're, you're bringing back such fond memories. Oh, how much money we made, how we you know, hoarded it up. We were like mighty dragons in our land. Come on, sit down, talk with me. Let's remember the good times. Tell me, is the grave as wonderful as they say it is? I bet there's some characters down there, you know, politicians, billionaires, presidents, dictators, war criminals, all crooks, crooks, oh, such crooks. Sit down, sit down. I would say let's open up a bottle, but well, we're, we're better than that, eh? Aren't we? No drinks, booze. Only the homeless. Nobody's. Ha <laughs> ha. Cup of water, perhaps. The homeless and the nobodies. At the other end of the room, standing in darkness with the lost souls, the ill and the sick, the McGloin and Scrook had tricked. I have to leave you now, Ed. They've come to take me away. Who? I... There's no one there. Scrooge. I have to warn you. Change your ways now. Change your ways before it's too late. This darkness, this, this, this pain. No, no, please, no, please, more time. Give me more time. I will change my ways, Edward. You must listen to me. Don't be mean. Don't love money. Be generous. You must learn this, Edward, or they'll come for you too. Chains were put upon the loin, around his wrists and his neck and his feet and his legs. No, but you change. Chains. Daniel, stay! Dear old Daniel McLean, back from the grave. I never thought he was the type for being so superstitious and, and stupid. <laughs> Just Daniel to get turned into a bloody ghost. Still, maybe it's an omen. A sign of good luck for tonight's treasure hunt. Daniel McLean's treasure. There's rumours he was a millionaire. A billionaire, a trillionaire and, and squirrelled it all away. You know, he never gave me a penny. For years we ran Scrook and McGloin's pharmacy and did we split it 50-50? Did we? Hell. But I know exactly where he hid it, the silly old sod. I found McGloin's map. I found your map, Danny boy, and no matter what spooky little dance number you might come up with, I'm going to find your treasure. Uncle? Oh, Rosie, I, I thought you were in bed. I was, but I thought I heard people singing. Who were you talking to? <laughs> you must have been dreaming, you silly girl. Come on, you've got a long day tomorrow. Full of this filing to do, and I want some shopping done for me. You want a Christmas dinner? No, no, none of that nonsense. Just some 
water biscuits and, and pickled gherkins. Go on, upstairs. I'll write you a list in the morning. The shops won't be open. It's Christmas Day. To bed, girl. Good night. But Rosie did not go to bed. Instead, she crouched by the keyhole and watched as her Uncle Ed pulled on a wetsuit, an anorak, an old sewester, and some wetsuits. Took his metal detector and a map marked with three X's and headed out into the darkest of Christmas Eve's. weather. Along the shore for miles he went, shoulders hunched, hands frozen, head bent. For the first time in years, Ed's heart was beating, wishing and wishing to hear the beeping, dreaming and dreaming of dosh, cold, hard coin, and guessing what he was owed by crooked McGloin. Then, suddenly, just as Edward was beginning to freeze, the metal detector gave out a great shriek. Ed took his shovel and started a dig, deep down in the sand till he hit something big. I found Danny's stash. I found Danny's stash! He just couldn't wait to see the cash. Here it was, buried on the shoreline. I've got it. I've got... God, it feels heavy as a tree. I just think this is only one of the three. He pulled and he pulled, hauling it from the sand. A chest laced with gold. But who did he find? Me! A ring box, gold, diamonds, let's have a look. Merry Christmas! Whoa! No! Hey, open up. What are you? Open the lid. Inside the ring box, Edward Scrook had seen something to make his blood run cold. A thing of light, a thing with one arm, now with one leg, now with twenty legs, now a pair of legs without a head, now a head without a body, a thing with no age, then aged. A girl, a boy, a woman, a child, a man, an angel, a demon, and in its hands, or, or hands, was a cap. It was a thing of one spirit, one voice. Open the lid! Well then of two spirits, two voices. Open the lid. Yeah, open the lid. Three, four, five voices. Open the bloody lid, Ed. How did you get into that box? Where has McGloin's treasure gone? Open the box and we'll explain everything. We'll even show you where the treasure is. Disgusting. No, that's that's not right, that. No. If anyone's disgusting around here, it's you, Edward Scrook, poking around for Daniel McGloin's ill-gotten gains. And why? To make yourself stinking rich on this day of all days. The day for generosity. What day? Christmas Day! Yeah, I don't care for Christmas. You haven't always been this way. There was a time when you couldn't wait for Christmas. Many, many years ago. How do you know? We've seen it all. Every Christmas passes us by like snow. And we see every one of them blurring before us like a blizzard. We are the spirit of Christmas is past. There! Grab it! Grab what? That snowflake! Oh, if you feel sick, put your head between your legs. This is me, you win. Pardon? Grab the snowflake! Grab the snowflake! Grab onto a snowflake, guys, if you want to come too! Yes.
get your Christmas gifts. Christmas toys for the children. Oh, spirit, that cannot be. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, grannies and granddads, great grannies and granddads, if you're still going, come all ye faithful and witness McGloin's glorious gluck, the medicine that is 100% guaranteed to cure all and any malaise, rash, headache, itching, burning sensation, joint pain, organ failure, nausea, hallucinations, insomnia, menstruation, <gasps> Dizziness, impotence, deafness, blindness, craziness, flatulence, infection, disease, cancer, menopause, flu-like symptoms that you good people might be experiencing. Roll up, roll up, try it for yourself. Uh, uh, you, there. Me? You, old woman. You look like you're practically begging for death. Why don't you come up here and we'll see what we can do for you. Uh, give her a big hand, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, give her a big hand. Now, get some of this glug down and tell me you don't feel better within 7.9 seconds. 7.9 seconds. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, good! Oh my god! Oh, yes, 7.9 seconds, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, exactly at uh, 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 7. Point nine. Seconds. Now that is a Christmas miracle. Ah, it's no miracle. It's McGloin's glorious glug. Come and get your glug. McGloin's glorious glug. A guaranteed cure all for any illness. Of course, it wasn't a medical cure at all, was it, Edward Scrooge? No, no. Well, those suckers believed what they wanted to believe. It was me, really, dressed up as an old woman. But it made me and Danny rich. Rich! Ha <laughs> ha! We all know all these dreams. Mm, but not everyone benefited from Glug Edward. You know the drill! Grab a snowflake! Whee! Jenny! Edward's crook could hardly believe what he was seeing. There, in front of him, was Jenny Trelawney, who in her youth had been the most beautiful woman in the whole of the county. Dry your eyes now, don't cry like that. Feeling any, Dad? I can't say I am, my darling. Maybe we should buy some more of this McGloin's glorious glove. No, no, don't go spending your money on that rubbish. Yes, yes, you go and have a nice time. Just switch the carols on before you go. <laughs> Crook's very old eyes stood a very young man, a very young Edward Neal Crook himself. Oh, Eddie, be cool, be cool, come on. Hey, are you from Tennessee? Because you're the only ten I see. Oh, God. Well, I haven't heard that one before. Yeah, well, I am kind of amazing with words. You are? Yeah. Are you a writer? Kind of. I work in uh, advertising. Oh. <laughs> what do you advertise? Washing up liquid. <laughs> Well, that's, um, lovely. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I'm Jenny. I'm Ed. You remember this feeling, Edward? I, uh, I can't say I do, spirit, no. <laughs> oh, Edward, I've had the most wonderful night. Jenny. Jenny, I don't mean to be forward, but can I walk you home? It's snowing and it's Christmas. No one should be alone. I would love that. Edward, <laughs> 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 you are simply hilarious. <laughs> oh, Edward. <laughs> How handsome you are in the moonlight. 
How many Christmases were like this, Edward? Not enough. Eddie? Eddie? Yes, my love? Do you know what day it is? Well, my love, I believe it is a day when my uh, business partner will want the accounts to be handed in. He's really pushing me hard this year. Is he, Eddie? Yeah, my love. I'm sorry. This is such a busy time of year for the business. I really must be going out. Yes, but, Eddie... It is Christmas Eve. What reason to stay on our toes, my love? Christmas is the season for the merchants and the traders. But, Eddie... Goodbye, my love. Old Edward Scrook watched the foolish young Eddie march out into the night, never to turn and see sweet Jenny, the most beautiful girl in the county, kneeling by a tree with a ring in her hand. Idiot! 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 Jenny's father died that night, Edward. Did you know? She never got the chance to tell me. Late, as usual. Oh, sorry, Danny. It was Jenny. Was distracting you, Eddie. She was distracting, as usual. Now, come on, focus here, boy. It's Christmas. The coldest, darkest, cruelest time of year for the sick and the old and the weak. They'll give all they have to save their old husbands and their children and their poor consumption riddled mothers and we'll be ready when they come. Their grubby hands, full of pennies. Oh, we'll be ready. Yes, Danny. Give that a stir. Come on now. I'm going to get this batch out to our patients before it's too late. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Oh, I'm screwed. Yeah? We're going to be very busy over these next few weeks, so I'd, I'd let that Jenny girl know that you won't be around much. Yes, Danny. Gloria, Hosanna for extortion. <laughs> As each Christmas passed, Scrook was colder than the last. Each Christmas, counting pennies. Each Christmas. Another snowflake, another snowstorm took McGloin, Jenny, the spirit of Christmas has passed. The snowstorm whipped it all away from Edward Scrooge. Hello? Hello in there. Where did you go? Scrooge peered in the box and gave it a shake. Hello? Then from the box fell a diamond ring, twinkling like a snowflake. Oh, I knew you'd hidden it here. I knew you had. Now, let's have a look. Diamonds, diamonds. Oh, yes, Lord, they would be diamonds. Gold. Two from the looks of it. Well, what could that be? Look at that, it's an engagement ring. No, no, never mind, never mind. Ignore that, that's all in the past now, all in the past. Elated and amazed by what he'd found, old Edward continued to hunt over the ground, searching and searching for the next X marks the spot. What riches could be found? Uh, and then he stopped. A vision of Jenny at her father's bedside, suddenly unwantedly came to his mind. It occurred to him, after all these years, it was he, Edward Scrook, was the cause of her tears. But he hurried the thought out of his head. It was not his fault Jenny's father was dead. It was not his fault he had to make money. It was not his fault he abandoned his Jenny. So, on will I hunt. No point dwelling in the past. And old Edward Scrook kept searching the sand. Just a dirty old fork. A dirty old fork, that may be. But when Scrook rubbed off the rust, something emerged from the sea. See, what Scrook hadn't realised was the fork wasn't unpleasant. It was simply the wand of the Dame of Christmas Present. Oh, 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 oh. oh sorry, uh, and of course, Daisy the cow. Hello, boys and girls. Are you all well? 
I didn't hear you. I, I said, are you all well? Oh, that's more like it. Are you all enjoying yourselves so far? Yes, I can see you are, madam. You're having far too much fun. You'll be going home carried by two strong men and singing jingle bells on a stretcher if you're not careful. <laughs> oh, God. That sounds like one of my little daydreams. Anyway, boys and girls, where are my manners? I haven't introduced myself. I am the day of Christmas present. Now I'm here for a man. Not that kind of man, you dirty old thing. Uh, named Edward Scrook. But I can't see him anywhere. Have you seen him, Daisy? No, I didn't think so. Your eyes are made of plastic ducky, aren't they? Makes it very difficult to see him at all. Have you seen him anywhere, boys and girls? He's behind you. Oh, no, he isn't. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, no, he isn't. He is. He's, he's standing literally behind you. I can't believe you didn't see him. You Have you literally be... never seen the pantomime? Goodness gracious me. Oh, there you are, Scrook. Me and Daisy were looking everywhere for you, weren't we, Daisy? Now, Edward Neil Scrook, I have been sent by the powers that be to offer you salvation. Will you take my hand? All right, all right. I know how this goes. I hold on to a snowflake. You show me visions and you make me a better person. Come on, let's just get it over with. Ooh, I love a man with a nice firm grip. Get ya. Edward, let me show you the sunrise. Edward Scrook, welcome to Christmas Day. Rosie! Rosie! It's our Rosie. She can't hear you, love. You're a bit slow to catch on, aren't you? Where is she going? Let's follow her. Shh! We're too loud. Shut up! We're invisible. Edward, the dame of Christmas present, and Daisy the pantomime cow all followed Rosie as she walked along the shore and up the cliff path, along the lane into the village where she turned left and went into the church hall. Inside was a sight that took Edward by surprise. Merry Christmas. Thank you, love. Merry Christmas. Thanks a lot, dearie. Merry Christmas. Uh, excuse me. Do you have something perhaps a little more nourishing for my wife? She just had a baby, you see, just this morning. And she needs to get her strength up. Well, that's wonderful news. Congratulations. I see what we've got, but I'm afraid we really had a very small budget this year. It's tougher than ever and the government won't give us money and people can't give because no one's got spare. Uh, oh. Oh, I understand. Give me a second. Hey, that's mine. She's never still. I hope this can get you something for your wife. Oh, thank you. You know, when will these people learn? Begging, it gets you nowhere. Stop scrounging. You had a problem? Oh, you know what? Keel over. Save the NHS for the rest of us. Hey, we could do with some resources. Let's decrease that surplus population. Leave. You should leave all of them. Go back to where they came from. And how do you suggest he does that? Running for his life and the life of his wife and child? He's got nowhere to go. Do you want to know where his son was born this morning? Look over there, at the lifeboat house. In there. His son was born in there, in the cold and on the concrete. You should be proud of Rosie. She's helping people. She's not leaving people out in the cold on their own. She understands Christmas. Now, come on. We've got one more thing to say, so let's make it snappy because I'm freezing me knockers off here. Now take my hand, you miserly old git. Pass the bread sauce, Mum. <laughs> Dad, he's hitting me. No, no. Yes, he is. Um, stop that fighting, you two. If I could have your attention, please. I would like to thank all of you for making this year so wonderful. But particularly... I would like to thank my lovely wife, Jenny. <laughs> As some of you know, Jenny's life has not always been easy. Too many people have taken advantage of her generosity and a loving heart. But I hope, darling Jen, that somehow we can make it up to you. So please, won't you raise your glasses to our Jennifer, the beautiful, kind, wise woman who agreed to marry me <laughs> on this day 25 years ago. <laughs> To Jennifer. To, to Jennifer. Jennifer! To Jennifer, Ace Crook. She hasn't changed. Still lovely as ever. Her. Isn't her husband handsome? Oof. Why would you show me that? I don't choose which snowflake lands where. 
What does that what does that mean? Well that sunset means that for Daisy and I, we've got to be going. Yeah, but but you haven't explained anything. All I got out of this is a bloody stupid fork, and I've got loads of those already. Maybe you don't have enough. And though he was still outwardly prickly, something had happened inside Edward's heart which made him feel warm and tickly. For as he listened to Jenny's husband's speech, he had wondered what he might have said, what praise he would have preached, what might have happened had Jem and his wife, what kind of home, what kind of family, what kind of life. From the sand, Edward pulled the final treasure, the final red cross on the Gloin's map. A diving helmet? A diving helmet, Edward had found, round as a fog bell and inside deep and dark as a sea trench. Edward lifted it and placed it over his head. For Jenny. My house! My kitchen! 1910, 1911, 1912, 1913, 1914, 1915, 1916, 1917, 1918, 1919, 20, good. Now for 1910 it was 650, for 1911 it was 650 and 14 pence. Oh dear, that's not right. Oh no, 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 I'll have to start over. 1911 was 600, 600, 600! My... My Rosie, don't you look old? Don't you look like me? Hi, Rosie. It's just us coming to give you a bath today. 1912 was 789.50 pence. No, no, no. She doesn't listen, Georgie. She never does. Can we put the heating on, Rosie? Oh, it's freezing in here. No, no heating, no money for gas. You see, he didn't leave me any. He didn't leave me a penny, not a penny, not a penny. That's why I'm here, see, trying to work out where it all went, what he did with it. Nasty, grabbing old man. He didn't leave little Rose anything, not a penny. So now she's sat here frozen and nasty and grabbing just like he was. 1913, 19... She used to be such a kind woman. My mum was homeless when she was pregnant with me, and Rosie came and checked on her every day, took her to the hospital and gave her a bed until she was back on her feet. What happened to her? This place. She knew about all that money he had, all the treasure he had, and it sent her mad when the old man left her nothing. Which old man? Which old man? If I get my hands on him, Rosie, poor Rosie, generous Rosie. The churchyard. How do you feel, darling? Jenny! Oh, Jenny! Oh, darling! I'm, I'm sorry. Who caused you a loss of pain? Who caused you pain? They'll have me to answer to, Jenny, my love. I'm glad. For him. Oh, it's over. I don't think he was very happy. Poor, lonely man. Edward Neil Scroop. 
How unhappy you must have been. Unhappy? Unhappy? Yes, yes! Now, now I understand how to be happy. Darling, you've shown me. Come on, Jen. Let's go. Please. Please turn around and look at me. Look at me, Jenny. Jen! Please! I'll change! I'll change! change. My dear girl. You found it. You found the treasure. And a fork. More than a fork. More than a fork. Oh, what treasure I have found. Come on, my girl. We haven't got a moment to lose. Uncle, what beautiful treasures. A Gloin's treasure. You really found it. You really found it. We must hurry. It's Christmas morning, you know. Show me to the church hall, Rosie. The church hall, Uncle? Yes, yes, to your marvellous Christmas dinner with all your friends. It's hardly a marvellous dinner, Uncle. Yeah, we shall make it marvellous. Oh, we'll have roasted potatoes and turkey and ham and gravy and cabbage and carrots and pigs in blankets and turnips and a Brussels sprouts and mash and peas and bread sauce and cranberry sauce and apple sauce and chutneys. Oh, we'll have biscuits, cakes, puddings cheese, wine, fruit, ale and ice cream, coffee and tea. Oh, we'll have it all. And presents, presents. What would you like? What would you like in all of the world? What would you like? I know you can choose anything, anything from, from my treasures up at the house. Come, come with me, my dear. We'll take them to your friends and everyone may pick what they would like. So up, up, up the rugged path they rushed, scattering jewels and coins and gems and crowns and gold and diamonds and silver as they ran. The magpies of those cliffs enjoyed rich pickings for years after. And when they got to the top, they went along the lane to the village and turned left into the church hall, but not before dropping by the farm. Keep the change! Oh, or better yet, come with us! Come on, keep up! Into the church hall they burst and there, oh, what a feast they served! Roast potatoes and turkey and ham and gravy and carrots and cabbage and pigs in blankets and swede and turnips and Brussels sprouts and mash and peas and bread sauce and cranberry sauce and apple sauce and chutneys and biscuits and cakes and puddings and cheese and wine and fruit and ale and ice cream and coffee and tea. Uncle, we've run out of forks! Not quite! And after the feasting, old Edward Neil Scrook handed out his treasures and everyone chose a present and everyone agreed it was the best Christmas yet and they really should do it again and again and again and again. And that it should be said of Edward that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed the knowledge. And may that be truly said of us and all of us. And as one sleepy child said, who I believe was called... I'm Tim! Ah yes, Tim. As little Tim... He's smaller than little, I'd say. Smaller than small, I'd say. Small Tim, as a small Tim said at the end of the day... God bless us, everyone! Oh, that's good. I thought we were going to have to walk. Hey, I can't wait for you to meet my Uncle Ed. He's quite a character. He loves Christmas.
I sing the alto, sing with Miss Fredbold. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, sing with her. She likes she likes people singing with her like that. It's good, isn't it? Box presents A Christmas Carol, directed by Eleanor Hibbert, adapted by Misha Jones, and produced by Alice Lloyd Davies. The Rocket Box ensemble were Zach Pierce, Kira McAllister, Freya Dawes, Sophie Parkin, Josh Gronia Chapman, Harry Brewer, Sam Colborn, Eleanor Hibbert, Misha Jones, Alice Lloyd Davies, and Ross Hayward. The Rocket Box carolers were Alice Lloyd Davies, Eleanor Hibbert, Misha Jones, and Harry Brewer. All original music and sound design was by Harry Brewer, Eleanor Hibbert, and Misha Jones. With special thanks to the James Allen's Girl school christmas choir for their beautiful rendition of have yourself a merry little christmas don't forget you can donate to our fundraiser just check out our website rocketboxtheatre.co.uk merry christmas